Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Star Teller Forecast for Aries for August 2013. So if Aries is your sun sign or Aries is your rising sign, then this is for you. If you're interested in having a personal reading with me, then you can contact me at my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or the link below this video. You can also see all the other resources I've put together and other ones that I haven't put together that I highly recommend for radically transforming your life. If part of your um, life transformation is coming through the um, study of astrology and you'd like to learn and you resonate with how I present it, then definitely contact me. I'm putting together um, um, different education series, um, and if you're in a different part of the world, then definitely contact me as well, because I am putting together classes that are compatible with wherever your time zone is. Um, so let me know. So, what's up for Aries for August? Um, as you know, I have Aries rising, so there is always uh, more of a personal um, personal effect to my Aries reading because I often have examples for um, my own life as to how I see these energies, um, you know, uh, coming into play. And it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, in August, there's going to be a T-square between Jupiter, Pluto, and Uranus. And a T-square is kind of the counterforce to the water chine energy that I was so excited about in July, where there was a series of harmonious aspects. A T-square is a series of 90-degree um, and 180-degree angle that um, put these planets, these signs, these energies, these houses that they fall into for each person into a point of conflict and a breaking point. For Aries, the energy of home versus work, career, life purpose. Okay, so home, family, career, work, life purpose, and self, and identity, and physical body are all going to be at odds. And if you're listening to this in July, you may already start to be feeling this right now. From my own life, I can see this is happening, and it is reaching a critical mass. And August, during this exact T-square between August 7th and the 21st, is when the point of, you could say, crisis, or you could say inevitable resolution that comes from the pulling, has to come into effect. My business is growing so rapidly, that, um, which is the 10th house, that I'm, I'm trying to accommodate that growth while accommodating the fact that I'm pregnant, have a five-year-old, and a relationship, and pets, and a life, and my physical body. Okay, so the fourth house is all the home and family stuff. The first house is my growing pregnant body and my physical self. And how am I going to balance the increasing business with my increasing family and my increasing need to um, take care of myself? This is the embodiment for all Aries energy of what you're going to be working with. And these, these angles tend to not be easy. But it doesn't mean that something bad will happen. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, this isn't innately a bad situation. It's the points of conflict through which you emerge, hopefully with solutions. And that is where my mind is focused. So for every... Um, horoscope for this month of August, I've been very focused on how can you find solution from things that seem like they're so stuck together that there's no way that you can get past it. So Einstein was infamous for knowing that you cannot solve problems with the same mentality or belief system in which they were created. So there's a need to step out of the situation. And now that's easy to intellectualize to say, okay, if you can just get an objective view, then you can figure out a solution. But when you're wrapped up in that, it's like, it's a, there are points of tension. There are multiple points of tension that are pulling you in three different directions. Um, and your work is to transcend this. I believe that we are trying to transcend duality while still being in form. And that is part of the point of our lives, and that's what we're striving for, and that you can do it. And I have many moments where I am totally doing it. And then there are times where you learn that there's ways you can do even better at that. And these T-squares are places where you can see how you can do that. There's a book called The Marriage of Spirit by Leslie Temple Thurston with Brad Laughlin, 
that I think is so phenomenal, as always, but especially for this period of time with these things that are going on. You can read the book from the beginning, but I recommend you start, read the pages maybe till it's like page 17 or something where she says, if you're curious about the exercises, get to section two. Because the biggest shifts won't come from the intellectualization and shifts that come from the reading. The biggest shifts come from using the exercises. They're super simple, but your ego doesn't want you to do them. You just kind of want to still dwell in, talk about, mentally resolve, brainstorm, you know, try to take action on. Aries energy is notorious for wanting to take action on something. I think it's very admirable. It's been very productive for me. But when you have these points of conflict like this, there isn't always an easy way that you can force and, and, and burst your way physically through it. So you have this opportunity to use this resource, the polarities exercise, the triangles exercise, there are other exercises where you can use these mental games, they're basically mental games, that word games, that you have a spiritual component where you can ask to be freed from this conflict and then the magical freedom starts to happen. So I'm very hopeful knowing that as this issue has been brewing for me and for everyone in their own, you know, ways, that I know that I have the resources that I need to come up with solutions. So for me, August is going to be about solutions. And I hope that you can frame this in that way as well. So check out those resources. And I know that you'll be really happy that you did. Okay, so what else is going on? Tremendous focus on home. Home has been a focus because Mercury was doing its retrograde thing in the fourth house. You were thinking about, am I going to move? Should I move? Where should I move? Should I move to this area? Should I move to that area? Should I move to a bigger house? Should I move to a smaller house? Should, the, all of the questions, should I be involved with my family financially? Should I not be involved with my family financially? Should I be involved with a loan from a bank or not? What should I do regarding housing? These very, very, very current questions in July and going to continue into August. August is an easier time for moving than, than July was because a lot of the information, or July is if you're listening to this in July, there's a lot of information from the Mercury retrograde cycle that you're not going to have an answer to until August. So if you can put off moving, this is one of those situations where even though your mind is telling you, the world tells you, you need to have something figured out like right now because you're moving in four weeks. It would actually be more conducive to wait until August and have only two weeks to find something than it would be to be looking now because it's going to create a lot of wasted energy where you look for something, find something, it doesn't work out. You get your hopes set on it, it doesn't work out. Then something happens because of your credit or this, whatever different kind of scenarios. The energies are not very clear for entering into contract, especially in a long-term manner, and it's not great for signing a lease. So August will be better for that. August is better for that. So do that stuff in August. Um, your creativity is also going to continue to be very much supported throughout August with the sun transiting through your fifth house. So looking for creative solutions, you could also use the same marriage of spirit exercises to work with your polarities. Let's say you're torn between moving to the beach and staying in the mountains. Let's say you're torn between moving out to the country a little bit or staying in the city. Whatever these polarities are that are pulling you in two directions or more directions, those exercises are just tremendously awesome for helping to free you from that. Then when you do that work, the answers and the solutions become much more readily um, uh, placed in your consciousness. Venus has been transiting through the sixth house um, for, part of, for part of July, and it will continue for part of August. That can bring more busyness to your work sector. So if you're self-employed, you can be very, very busy with Venus being in there. Um, it happens every once every year and a half, so it's a nice little push. Um, you can also think about ways to use your energy more efficiently when that's happening so that you can make more money by working less. Many people associate working more with making more, and in some ways that's true. But a good question to ask at this period of time is how can you use your energy more efficiently so that you can either work the same or work less and make just as much or more? So be looking out for those types of, um, you know, questions and answers as well. Um, 
see what else is going on there. Something else I wanted to talk about. I have mentioned this before, but in case you missed it or in case you needed to be re reminded, Pluto is transiting through Aries' um, 10th house. This is a very long-term transit. But it's very important to know that the energy of this transit represents grow or die. This is the mantra when Pluto is moving through a house. So when it's moving through your house of work, career, life, purpose, if you have an opportunity to expand your business and you don't take it, your business can die and go away. I think about a story that um, I read in a book by Robert Hand, who is an amazing astrologer, um, and I recommend anything that he um, wrote. So, or was an amazing astrologer. I don't, I think he's still around. <laughs> anyway, I'm a little bit out of touch. Sometimes a lot of my teachers or have come and gone so much that I can't even remember <laughs> what the time-space continuum is. Anyway, so he said, there is a story that he thinks of with this um, about a man who had a business for 30 years. He was successful. He had a great business. The time came for him to step into something um, new, either expanding his business or getting into a realm that he wasn't involved in. And he decided, I've been doing fine all this time. I'm not going to make any changes. Within a year, his business was bankrupt, and he was done. Pluto, transiting the 10th house, this is what's going on, especially when it's close to the midheaven, as it is right now. So this time especially, grow or die. You're probably going to be scared. There are going to be things that you have to step into that you have no idea what you're doing. Fortunately for Aries, Aries energy excels in a space of forging forward and headlong into things without having any idea what they're doing. <laughs> so use this aspect of yourself to expand your business. I can't tell you how many of you are going to have your business, work, career, life purpose sector so entirely transformed beyond what you could ever even imagine. It's happening for so many, and it's going to continue happening. But think about this mantra, grow or die. So. I can't see what's in your personal chart. I would like very much to. If you're interested in a personal reading, then definitely contact me um, through my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below here. If you're interested in learning astrology, then we can do it together. It will be super fun if you resonate with how I present things. Um, I can help you understand your charts better, understand your friends and family's charts better. The, um, the classes are going to be in smallish groups, although the replays will be accessible through a different venue. Um, so that we can use the charts, um, you know, of each of the participants to go deeper and everybody can learn. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely contact me, and I hope you have a fabulous August.